Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we want to talk about something that sometimes uh, when people get into springtime they begin to wonder, I put my plants in and they're not really super thriving or they're not as big as they should be or maybe, hey, I thought I remembered last year when I planted these things at this time that they're already you know, much bigger than they are. And I wanted to talk about a concept today called grower degree days. Now, what a grower degree day is, it's just a fancy way of saying, hey, we're trying to come up with some measurement or metric, for lack of a better term, of trying to determine, well, how much heat is actually getting uh, available for plants to grow? Now, as we all know, when plants grow, they need light, they need water, they need soil biology active enough to give the plants the nutrients they need, and they need a temperature and different plants have different temperature ranges in which they perform the optimum of. Many times in the flower business, most of the, uh, you know, people are really looking for their flowers to grow fast and get to a nice size so that they'll bloom and, and be, you know, have a nice bloom size on them, a nice stem length and things of that nature. As well, <clears throat> as, well as when you're raising food, it's kind of the same idea. Certain things, you know, a nice good top to your potato plants like we have here, will start to build the energy for the tubers under, underneath. But one of the major things is how much heat do these guys get on an everyday basis? And that's where grower, grower degree days come in. What that means is, is it's, it's taking the high temperature in a 24 hour period and the low temperature, adding them together and coming up with an average. And then typically that average number is divided is, is, well, when you add them together, you divide it by two to get the average. And then from that, you're gonna subtract what they consider a, a base temperature in which plants really don't grow that much. And things just kind of stay where they are. Now, depending on who you look at, that number for the base that you subtract from to where no plant growth happens is right around 40 to 50 degrees. Most of uh, the ones I've seen use 40 degrees as a base. So as an example, if I have a nice day like today and it's 70 degrees outside, but the nighttime temperature in spring is still really cool and it's gonna go down to 35, I would take my 70, which was my high, my 35, which is my low, come up with 105, and then I would divide that by two, which basically means we're talking about 52.5, but you would, be conservative and round it down and say it's 52. And if I have a 40 degree base, I would take that 52 number and I would subtract 40 from it. And that number 12 is how many grower degree days I got that day. So what that means is a day in itself doesn't mean a whole lot, but it's the accumulated amount of these grower degree days over time. Okay, so now let's take the example of summertime. Suppose you have a nice day and it's 80 degrees. And let's just say you live in a part of the country where it doesn't cool down that much at night. Maybe the lowest temperature at night is 70 degrees. So 70 plus 80 gives you 150 divided by two, you get 75 and then subtract your 40 degree base from that and you get 35 grower degree days. So you can see that in the springtime, the grower degree days you get per day could be significantly lower than you get in the summertime. So what does that mean? Well, these numbers are cumulative. So as an example, some plants and people have calculated this saying, how many grower degree days on average does it take a type of plant to get from uh, growing just germinated to actual finishing and harvest. And some of these people have figured out things like sunflowers is somewhere right around 1400 grower degree days. And you know, other, other things like a tulip could be significantly less. It could be half that. And so what that means is, is like if I'm moving along in the spring and I plant my sunflowers, I'm gonna get real early on my sunflowers and put those guys in, but I need 1400 grower degree days. But the packet on the seed says, hey, it's only 55 days, that should work. But wait a minute, I put my sunflowers in and I'm starting out at 12 degrees a day and maybe it eventually builds to 20 or 25, you know, three months later, my sunflower continues to grow slow until it hits the enough grower degree days that it's gonna change over from a vegetative state to a blooming state. So the whole idea behind it is, 
is it gives you the idea of saying relatively you can start looking at things in, in a general sense and saying, I think I understand why things grow slower at certain times of the year, certain types of plants. Whereas other plants, you may plant like a cool season plant that only needs maybe 800 or 1,000 grower degree days, you know, uh, and then suddenly you put it in in a climate where it's like really warm and you're, you're cooking along at 30 grower degree days, meaning about every three or four days you're, you're plopping on 100, 100 grower degree days because remember these things are cumulative, so you're going to be adding these things together. You can really quickly in 30, 40 days get to that 1,000 hours. And so something that should have took almost a month and a half or two months to get to bloom could do it in a month. So that could be like stock, which prefers to grow in cool um, season, cool months. It right. gets a signal it's moving faster and faster and faster, and it blooms and it's only six inches. Right. And then that, I mean, if it gets the signal fast, it could change physiologically what the plant's going to look like. How long did it stay in its you know vegetative state? You know, how great of a root system it was able to develop during that period of time. All these things start coming into play. Now, this isn't the only factor. I mean, there's other things that affect it, like, you know, what is the day length? Um, what is the soil temperature? You know, the soil temperature greatly influences the biology level. And the types of biology, you know, certain plants like zinnias are not going to grow well in, in uh, 50 degree soil. So when you put zinnias out early, the soil biology is active, but it isn't active in such a way that the zinnia can take advantage of what the biology is producing for it. So you're going to see a zinnia plant if you put it out and, the, and maybe your daytime temp is 65 and you go, well, it should be warm enough, but your soil temperature is 45. The plant is just going to stay there and suffer because it doesn't get what it needs to grow. And what, how do you know when a zinnia, zinnia is suffering? It looks yellow. It typically doesn't get the nitrogen uptake it should be getting. Uh, so its biologic processes aren't working correctly. It's not, it's just, it's so, failing to thrive. Basically, right. it won't grow. And a lot of times the leaves on plants that are stressed, because it's not the right time, is they turn red. They could turn red. They can turn yellow. Uh, in some cases, you know, they'll be uh, more subject to maybe bug attack, right. uh, things of that nature. So, I mean, fungal diseases, things can happen that go bad because the plant is not performing at its optimum. Now, I want to give you another example in the flower world that, that is really, truly um, grower degree influenced. We used to raise um, lilies, Asiatic lilies, Oriental lilies, things like that. And we had them on what was called a program, meaning our bulb supplier was giving them the equivalent cold treatment they needed to get before they would germinate. So they would be primed and ready to go to germinate when we'd get them. If we would get an Asiatic lily and we would plant it in our crates, similar like we do with the potatoes here, uh, in our hoop house, um, it would still take in the springtime, when we would get those things in, in late winter or midwinter, we get it right around the middle of February, our first planting, and they would not bloom until almost uh, Memorial Day. So we had, you know, well over a hundred plus days. And this so, was unheated. This so is an unheated tunnel. All it's doing is protecting against rain. And freezing, you know, give us the opportunity. If it, if it was going to freeze, we'd be able to protect it. So. Although the grower degree days inside of this tunnel were much more than outside, it still was a sufficient length that it took, you know, well over 100 days for it to get to the point of blooming. That same lily variety, if we were to plant it in June, get a bulb primed and ready to go, would be ready in less than 75 days. So it would that it makes that much difference because the number of grower degree days, the length of the light uh, in terms of your day. All these things come into play to make the plant perform faster or better at, at its optimum. Also too, what we noticed is the bulbs that we planted in the spring, it took longer to grow, were typically a little bit longer stem on the Asiatic side than they were in the summertime. They tend to be a little shorter. So these are kind of observations that we noted. Now to give you a great example of what we're doing here today, we did a video on this not sure the number of weeks, we could be pushing close to four weeks now uh, of planting uh, potatoes in a crate as an experiment. Here we are. These guys have been doing great in here. 
Um, we've been fertilizing them with the JLF every 10 days once they started to germinate and the leaves are big and everything is healthy. And we'll show you a picture here side by side of field planted same variety potatoes planted uh, maybe five days later than I we planted even in here. I think it's that long. And they're, and they're just barely now starting to germinate. Just barely coming through the soil. Right. So that's the difference with heat. And so when sometimes when you think, oh, I failed in my crop, uh, I didn't, you know, it, they're not growing, they must be sick, there's something wrong. Many, many times what it is, is it's simply the environmental factors, heat being a major one, day length being another, and the amount of water that they have. I think those are the, really the key important things. And, and if you're not performing to what you think it should be from year to year, it could simply be, particularly if you don't have a climate controlled greenhouse, even though you're still in a greenhouse, your performance from year to year can vary depending on what the ambient uh, weather has been like uh, during your growing period. During the thinking about this um, video, I looked back at year uh, one year ago, the same date, and two years ago, the same date. And it's radically different this year to last year. I mean... We've been, we've been on average not getting as many grower degree days. Right. Even though we, we can point to an individual day and say, oh, oh we had beautiful. two or three days where it was beautiful, but the nighttime temperatures go way low. I, I mean, and so I think that's what people kind of forget. They forget that there's two sides to the, to the plant. The plant has to deal with day and night. That, that's the thing is that today could be 65 to, and tomorrow will be 70, but mm -hmm. both days for the, for the low are 37. Right. So we aren't getting very many grower degree days, if you do the math, yep. based on these temperatures the next two days. Now and what? yet you look at it and you go, oh, wow, all my stuff should really be growing because it's a nice spring day. But now, People forget about nighttime. Right. And nighttime has, a, you know, that's the other side of the coin, the other 50%. And one of the things you can do, um, many universities um, that have agricultural programs, uh, particularly ones that maybe are associated with a weather station, with the NOAA, uh, they will have maybe perhaps in your area uh, historical cumulative uh, grower degree information. Uh, I know Oregon State does it as a high slope uh, weather station, which we're blessed with. That's just 30 miles away from us. So we can look year to year and say, wow, yes, we've been dramatically cooler than we thought. And you know what, folks, it doesn't take a lot of grower degree days, you know, missing five degrees a day, you know, and within 30 days, you're off 150. And within three months of a cool winter, you're off almost 400 to 500. So that could be a big difference of a couple of weeks in the cases of some things. So, don't panic if things are, you know, not moving the way they should. Once the heat comes back, they'll start moving again. But they're also, aren't they still developing a good root system, even in that low uh, Assuming, yeah, wh wh that where you're growing, that there aren't other negative environmental impacts, like, you know, too much water or uh, poor aeration, you know, keeping too high humidity in your tunnel. Uh, overwatering, um, overcrowding, those things. I mean, those are all cultural things that you can control with inside of a tunnel. Um, and if you are doing those things all consistently from year to year, you know, what you're really kind of doing is, is the day length is going to be the same this year as it was last year at this particular point. So that's, you know, always going to be what it is. So really the major thing, if you're controlling the watering, it's the, it's the temperature issues and how you deal with that inside the tunnel anyway. Now outside the tunnel, you're greatly at the whims of mother nature from that perspective. One of the things that will slow down a plant germinating and growing, particularly like in our area, is we'll get these spring rains that will come in. You can have a great day and get uh, to the afternoon, the clouds come in and it starts to rain. Well, that rainwater could be 40 degrees and that will have a great impact in terms of the soil temperature for, um, you know, the plant and that will slow down growing processes and things like that. That's one of the reasons a contributing factor why 
our field planted potatoes are actually you know significantly behind these guys here in the crates these guys here in the crates the way they're going we're going to put a little more mulch on these guys over the next week or two probably be pulling new potatoes out of here by um well probably mid to late may um, we should be able to get some new potatoes some small little guys that we you know we can use as boilers and that was the whole point of this exercise was to say okay well how much more how fast you know can we get this uh potato type thing going and in actuality um it'll probably work the flip side on the back side of the season too uh, we'll be able to go a little longer plant like a late season uh crop in the crates of of um you know reds and early reds and early whites and kind of get the same idea get fresh potatoes all the way to the point where you know the day length gets too low and the frost starts to happen so you got any thoughts well, it's just always been really frustrating for me to go, wow, we had a week of really beautiful weather. Why isn't my stuff growing? <laughs> because I always forget at night, it's not frosty, so I don't have to worry. But it's also not super warm. It's right at, you know, 38 to 40 degrees and, you know, high of 60 to 65. And it's like, well, that's not enough. Some things it sort of helps, but... Well, I mean, a week of good weather always helps. Yeah, okay? but it's like but also too, to happen and then things but, just start blooming. Right, and, and if you look at it and you say, well, wait a minute, I've had um, eight weeks of weather, which uh, have I've lost maybe four or 500 grower degree days. And even though my next week that I'm in now, I'm gaining now, I'm doubling the amount per day of my grower degree days, it gets very difficult to make up in a very short period of time you know, a deficit like that. So what happens is um, the plant will respond and will grow and maybe starts growing faster. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is, is once you get too far behind, then the plant is going to compensate <clears throat> and do things like maybe not grow to the length that should have. It speeds up. It speeds up and moves towards its, its, its goal, which is to reproduce. And and, and you may not be staying in the vegetative stage, you know, effectively long enough that you get a nice long stem or you get a nice, you know, big healthy uh, top to your plant or something like that. So do you recommend keeping track of grower degree days? Well, you know, we do it. I, I would look at it this way. You, you know, if it doesn't that big of a deal to you, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. It's a week off, whatever, you know, you know what happens, right? And, but it gets there eventually. So I don't sweat it. I wouldn't sweat it. Um, it, it is interesting to it. know about it and you say if you can see something is and you know that it's not performing like it was you might do a little research and just you know you could go back and get temperature data and just put it in a spreadsheet and do that simple formula and you can kind of see you know maybe compare a year to year and see if you are running behind or running ahead yeah just looking through your pictures right and the other aspect is sometimes this work is already done for you by a uh, university at a weather station or something like an that. An extension. An office. extension office or something of that nature. So it's more of a, just an indicator, you know. Sometimes it's just it's just easy to forget because if your days are nice and but your nights are cold, cool. And you don't remember <clears throat> that part. You go, why are they well, blooming? It's because everybody always remembers the nice days. At nighttime, you're asleep, right? Yeah. So you just <laughs> want to know why your flowers aren't blooming yet. So I think we beat this horse pretty good, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what do you think of the spuds, guys, huh? I think they look awesome. Can't wait to have some. Yep. The other ones are really behind. Yeah, they'll catch up, though. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, folks, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.